segment of SoCo Chat. Uh, we're pleased to say that this episode uh, is going to be presented today both in English and Spanish. Um, our special guest is Marco Suarez, Program Manager with the Sonoma County uh, Economic Development Board. And we'll be talking about an important and unique event that's coming up this, this, this weekend on Sunday, March 2nd in Windsor. That event is a farm worker resource fair, which will be held at uh, 1 30. I'm going to get this details right. It's going to be held 1 30 to 4 p.m. at Our Lady of Guadalupe Church on Old Redwood Highway up in Windsor. Uh, this is a fair that's been organized in partnership with the Sonoma County um, a Human Resource, Herman's Human Services Department, JobLink, uh, California Human Development, and dozens of other community partners. Um, we're going to talk about that. I'm Paul Gullickson, Communications Manager for the County of Sonoma. And I will be your host for this segment, communication specialist Gilbert Martinez, who is usually behind the scenes running our motherboard for SoCo Chat. He will be our host for our second but similar discussion with Marcos, which will be done in Spanish. So we thank Gilbert for his willingness to be on this side of the camera. But for now, Marcos, welcome to SoCo Chat. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're, we're glad to have you. Well, first, let's tell us about this resource fair and how it came about. Uh, yes, uh, it, this uh, resource fair came from uh, the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. The Board of Supervisors identified that there's a need uh, in, in the farm working community, especially within uh, right after harvest, around November, through um, uh, until the beginning of spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, they identified when they talked to the leadership of the Human Services Department and said, we need to bring a resource fair for farm workers, bring organizations that can have uh, resources for them. So then... Uh, Sonoma County Job Link, who has the experience of putting on job fairs, resource fairs, uh, many of them throughout uh, the county, they were tapped and then they um, contacted us, the Economic Development Board, in terms of also partnering and along with other uh, organizations throughout the county uh, because this has been a grassroots uh, effort to to really uh, bring this resource fair about. And so Human Services, Job League, Economic Development Board, you just start reaching out to some of these community-based organizations, partners, to help putting this. And we, apparently you got a pretty good response when you we started wanting to put this together. Yes, uh, thankfully, I mean, definitely the, we here in Sonoma County, we we count on a lot of uh, or, or nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of private public uh, partnerships that uh, also organizations from the counties, different cities that want to support throughout the county. So that was uh, really good. Uh, we started just really getting uh, so many of them. We're almost, I think we're, numbers are up towards almost 50 oh, organizations. So uh, it, it's been a great uh, show of support, uh, a lot of positivity. Well, tell us um, uh, what kind of, what kind of services are going to be available at this fair? What, what kind of, I mean, I know you have, you said nonprofits, community-based organizations. We also have some government agencies that will be there. Yes. Government agencies. There's going to be uh, resources, for instance, for people, for the farm workers to come and get uh, any type of help with applying for CalFresh, for okay. instance, uh, Medi-Cal, uh, a lot of resources uh, for 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 people uh, throughout the community. Also, for instance, there's going to be the uh, organizations, medical organizations that are mm -hmm. going to be doing checking for blood pressure, uh, diabetes. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're currently right now looking uh, potentially uh, to have inform at least at minimum information about vaccinations. Oh, good. If not, potentially, hopefully vaccinations on site. But at this point, we don't have it on site, but we do want to have that information. Also, uh, including we're working with 211, that's going to be there as well. And as you may know, that that's a really important organization to have because we're really trying to work with our farm workers that need resources. Many of them right now are having challenges uh, really getting um, their appointments with the Mexican consulate because they need an ID, mm -hmm. which is a matricula. And so uh, right now with, for instance, uh, United Way of the Wine Country and 211, the partnership there where they give a, a free tax preparation for uh, low-income workers, uh, they they need an ID. So we're wor we're working with all these resources, just uh, different organizations to re really be there. The, I know the, the uh, Redwood Empire Food Bank is, will will be there as Fantastic. well, uh, yeah. providing uh, some 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 food. And <clears throat> one of the things that I want to mention is that for the first 200 farm workers that show up to the event, there will be uh, free uh, meals oh, for the first 200 farm workers that are there. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, just have if, if you anybody that's listening to this knows of uh, farm worker families, farm worker 
uh, farm workers to really encourage them to come because we want to uh, really bring any and all resources available to to them. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned United Way um, and uh, 211 because they're, they're, we're actually going to have them on as a guest in our next segment uh, of uh, SoCo Chat, and we plan to talk to them a little more about that. But but so tell me, um, these sounds terrific. Sounds like you've got a lot of opportunities, resources available for these farm worker families. Uh, what is it? What is it about this time of year that's that's a good opportunity to do this? I mean, we're between harvests and yes. Well, many of them are out of work. Yeah. They and and it's uh, and it right now with the economy and people are uh, having a hard time. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that we're also doing, we are getting donations from different uh, our, our our nonprofit organizations got some of the donations in through uh, California Human Development, and uh, we're able to give out some. Uh, some some gift cards okay. in the forms of whether it's uh, gas cards or to certain certain stores, uh, uh, including like uh, Lola's Market, who mm-hmm. gave out some some uh, some gift cards as well for for farm workers. And there's going to be raffles, and that's how that we're going to be giving them out as well. So it's it's a collaboration. Like I mentioned, it's a grassroots, mm-hmm. and everybody's really coming together, and we're trying to build on on. Uh, and, and looking at not only providing what resources they're looking for, but we also are using this uh, resource fair as a way to learn even more from them, yeah. right? Because we're going to be making sure that we understand what is it that you're looking for? What is it your biggest need? Th- those are the type of things that we're going to be asking them as well. So then that way we can come back and say, okay, this is what, uh, you know, more of the need that is out there. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, that, that's is an, certainly an example of the kind of partnerships that the county has been trying to build more on for these kinds of, uh, of, of events and, and how we can work with the community-based organizations to really reach and, and fill the needs within the community. And, and I know that there's a number of farm workers that, that were impacted by the recent significant storms we had. You know, they, they, their, their work lives are disrupted, their family lives, they had a lot of power outages too. So I'm sure some of these resources are really going to help them at this time. Yes, definitely. And I just, I'd, I'd be, uh, you know, definitely want to mention also that, you know, Alliance Medical Center is, a, is, is they're doing a lot of outreach and working with us together. And I, like I mentioned, CHD, a gentleman, Zeke Guzman, has been an advocate for farm workers for many, many years and really also working with us in terms of really identifying what are the things that we need to make sure that we have, right, the resources. And as we've been going through and, and really working with all the organizations, uh, there's new organizations that pop up that yeah. say, hey, we want to be there as well. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention, there's going to be also financial organizations there right. that uh, potentially where where uh, uh, farm workers can potentially have uh, some financial assistance in terms whether they're low interest loans or you know really working with with the community to to help them in, and engage more. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. I know we we found some of the, the some of those partnerships, trusted uh, community leaders within um, the farm worker community were so important in getting out word about vaccinations and response to COVID. And uh, hopefully we can continue to build on those kinds of partnerships. And this is an opportunity to do that. Um, yes. has, has the county ever done something like this before? You know, no, this, this is, uh, uh, from what I'm uh, hearing from everybody, is this is our first uh, first time doing a, a resource fair like this. But it's uh, it's it's something that uh, it's it's really good for the community, and mm-hmm. I uh, one of the things that we're seeing more and more is that all these organizations are coming to. And one one of the things that is very important to acknowledge as well about this is that sometimes people will say, well, uh, if farm workers are undocumented, mm-hmm. they won't qualify for many of the um, you know resources or benefits yeah. that are out there. But then again, they have children. And if they have right. children, yeah. they'll qualify. For instance, one of the providers that I talked to uh, mentioned that if, for instance, let's say a farm worker that's undocumented has two kids, right, that are born here in the U.S., sure. they qualify, they potentially could qualify for CalFresh. That could be $200 a month right. of food that they can have every month. So, right. so, so a lot of the times uh, our farm workers don't know all ab- about resources or then yeah. they don't know that they can qualify for resources yeah. because one of the things that I always say, since I've been doing this for a long time in terms of working in terms of uh, as the business diversity program manager for the economic development board and working throughout the community is that a lot of, there are so many resources that we have in this County, but 
the hardest part is having the access to it. Right. So this through this resource fair, we hope that we can provide that access. That yeah. could be that access and that and the beginning of something that can really be uh, a way that they can uh, the farm working uh, our members of our farmer community can come and feel safe and feel that they can uh, act, have access to all these resources and those organizations. Yeah, well, that's that's tremendous and it certainly is timely. I mean, there was a story in the New York Times the other day about how um, the, the so many people have been um, basically removed from Medi-Cal because they they didn't they didn't keep up with their paperwork or various reasons and and because the, uh, the rules have changed since the covid pandemic when when nobody was you know people were required to leave everybody on Medicaid uh, uh, Medicaid and now it's now it's being dialed back and um, you know so many of those who have been kicked off have I kicked off those roles are children. Two thirds of them out of Texas were were children. So getting those kind of resources, particularly for our kids, is so important. So do you think this is going to be a one time event? Do you hope to do it on a regular basis? Well, I can tell you what I can tell you is that we've been getting a lot of positive feedback from other members of the community of different organizations from throughout the other areas of other districts of the county. And they're asking like, hey, would you ni- it would be nice to have uh, a farm worker resource fair like this one in our area over here. So uh, definitely from from our side, I think it's a positive thing and the yeah. community is taking it in uh, very well. And and, we, you know, it, it'd be upon, you know, I mean, there's always uh hopefully we do. And so we're, we're looking forward to that. Well, that's great. Well, I, I know you can't promise anything, but it certainly seems promising. Yes. And, uh, well, Marcos, could you tell us again, the, the, the details about where, when it's going to be? Yes. Uh, this will, the farm worker resource fair will be on Sunday, March 3rd mm-hmm. from one thirty PM to 4 PM okay. at our lady of Guadalupe church. Also the Mary Agatha first center. That's mm-hmm. right there. The first it's center. at 8,400 old Redwood highway in Windsor. Okay. So this this Sunday coming up. Fantastic. I'm glad you clarified. I think I said March 2nd. It's March 3rd. It is Sunday, Sunday. At, at the uh at the Guadalupe Church on uh, Old Redwood Highway. Well. Yes. Well, uh Marcos, thank you very much. We really appreciate you being here and as always as a thank you for being here, we'd like to give you one of our so Co chat mugs. Oh wow, thank <laughs> so, you. <laughs> yeah, you're you're welcome. And appreciate to our listeners it. If you have comments about this or any other segment or have a suggestion for a future topic of discussion on SoCo Chat, please email us at publicaffairs, one word, at sonoma-county.org. That's publicaffairs at sonoma-county.org. Also, we encourage you to stay tuned as we look forward to offering more versions of SoCo Chat in both English and Spanish in the days to come. Once again, this podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon, as well as on YouTube. So follow us. Thank you all, and be sure to tune in for our next segment of SoCo Chat. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me.